Leaving Africa, our ancestors encountered one of the most mysterious and enigmatic of the archaic humans we call ancestors. The Denisovans sometimes feel more like a myth than anything we could consider reality. Our older cousins, where this DNA comes from, were just like us in many ways, and in many ways were so different. Their skull shapes, size, and body shapes differed from our ancestors in many ways, just to name a few. I even made an entire video explaining this, if you'd like to take a look at that after this video. What this means is that it's likely that somewhere deep in your lineage, many, many thousands of years ago, one of your great, great grandparents was not a homo sapien. And in fact, was one of these incredible humans we know so little about. This DNA has a huge effect on the physical attributes of those people with Denisovan ancestry and can be attributed to significant differences to modern humans who don't have these genes. You see, if you have Asian, Melanesian or Native American DNA, you most likely have a significant amount of Denisovan DNA. This is not to say other populations don't have Denisovan DNA. And interestingly, some Scandinavian populations have disproportionately high amounts of Denisovan DNA when compared with other European groups. In particular, people in Iceland seem to have a significant amount of Denisovan DNA. And researchers are currently in hot pursuit of a decent theory as to how this Denisovan DNA got there while being mostly absent in the rest of Europeans. Here is a chart showing the average amount of Denisovan DNA present in different populations. Feel free to pause the video and find any groups you descend from for your own reference. But what are some good examples of this DNA? Let's take a look at our first. Resistance to cold. A gene modern humans inherited from Denisovans allows humans to deal with extreme cold better. It does this through influencing how our cells transport zinc, which while giving humans a higher resistance to cold, is a double-edged sword. Unfortunately, it increases the likelihood of mental disorders as well. This is due to how important zinc is in the health of the human brain. But it would seem that this gene was so important and crucial to these people that the benefits have outweighed the problems it may have brought along with it. Populations in Siberia and those in extreme environments such as the Inuits on the other side of the world have several other genes just like this one from Denisovans to allow them to adapt to the biting cold they endure for much of their lives. They have higher amounts of brown fat, which produces heat, and newborn babies are able to keep themselves warmer for longer when compared to the average human, as well as them having higher birth weights. High altitude, low oxygen adaption. Researchers have long wondered how Tibetans live and work at altitudes above 4,000 meters where the limited supply of oxygen makes most people sick. So, we are nearing 4,000 meters in altitude and behind us they are busy building the trail up to one of the base camps of the Himalayas. And as you can hear, I'm quite out of breath. We've been walking up here and the oxygen is getting really thin. These guys behind me are just fine. <laughs> in fact, they're doing construction work at this at this altitude, it's incredible. And uh, I think this is just one of the examples of evolutionary biology at work. They're completely fine. And the rest of our group is struggling. You see, the ordinary human, when faced with lower oxygen levels found at altitudes above 4,000 meters above sea level, more often than not struggles with their health due to the impact of this low oxygen environment. Altitude sickness can kill and is no joke. Even once the bodies of the average human have acclimatized to this low oxygen environment, the body now faces higher chances of heart attacks 
and blood clots due to higher amounts of hemoglobin that thickens the blood. This gene was positively selected in the ancestors of these people after they colonized the Tibetan Plateau, and it would seem that interbreeding with Denisovans allowed these humans there today to change enough to survive these extreme conditions. Super Athlete Gene Interestingly, the same gene that is responsible for allowing humans to survive at high altitudes also has a secondary effect of causing those who have it to be super athletes. The most famous of which being the Sherpas, who serve as porters and guides climbing Mount Everest and carrying unimaginable weights, almost unaffected, up one of the world's most unforgiving and difficult climbs. The Denisovan-derived super-athlete gene is common amongst Tibetans and is sometimes found in other populations closely related to them, such as the Gurkhas, renowned for their strength and endurance in battle. In fact, the Gurkhas are so well respected that a unit of these soldiers still exists in the United Kingdom's fighting force and is regarded as one of the utmost elite fighting units on Earth. In fact, I just returned from a trip to meet these people in the Himalayan foothills of Nepal, and I am in the process of making a video about them, along with the other groups of humans that live in that area. This video will be titled Meeting the Children of Denisovans, where I learn more about the special DNA these people have from Denisovans, and just how much of an advantage it gives them. The superathlete gene allows the bodies of those fortunate enough to have it to transport and process oxygen more effectively than the average human, allowing their muscles to work at greater intensity for longer. This is done through the regulation of hemoglobin in the body and allows these people to get more oxygen to the limbs more quickly, making them stronger and faster than the average person, even more so at normal altitudes. Before we get into the next set of traits inherited from Denisovans, I'd like to announce that I will be regularly uploading members-only material, which will include uncut, long discussions of theories presented on this channel, and any upcoming expeditions coming in the future. So, if you haven't become a member of Archives of Egni, consider doing so. Enough self-promotion, let's get on to the next trait. Stronger, shovel-shaped teeth with extra roots. Humans with higher amounts of Denisovan DNA tend to have teeth that look more similar to the fossil teeth of Denisovans uncovered thus far. If you've had a molar pulled and found that you have three roots instead of the usual two, you may have your great-great Denisovan granddad's teeth. The three-rooted lower molar is rare and is found at around a 3% occurrence in non-Asians. Other things like extra cusps on these molars and larger sized molars mean that they are often more robust and tolerant to higher forces. In contrast, its presence in Asian-derived populations can exceed 40% in China and the New World. Populations in areas with higher Denisovan DNA tend to also have incisors that are shovel-shaped. This shovel shape strengthens incisors, making them more resistant to higher pressures. And these teeth are found more commonly in Asian and Native American populations. Enhanced immune systems. When studying the DNA of Papuan people in Papua New Guinea, scientists uncovered a fascinating detail hidden within their genome. Papuan people's DNA was shaped by their Denisovan ancestors. Amazingly, Papuans have one of the highest amounts of Denisovan DNA in the world, and it seems that this branch of Denisovans, which we will for now be calling the Jungle Denisovans, were a separate branch from those found in Asia proper. This DNA helped these people living in humid conditions cope with the higher amounts of infection and microbes present in these tropical conditions and were obviously very important as they have stuck around in quite significant amounts until the present day. 
One could imagine how useful having a supercharged immune system could mean the difference between life and death in an environment where a small cut could mean certain death when exposed to warm, humid, bacteria-laden environments and why this gene is still found among Melanesian people even to this day. That sums up the physical traits we will be talking about in this video. Stay tuned for my upcoming video about meeting the descendants of the Denisovans in the Himalayas in the coming weeks.